Today we're going to be taking a look at the Books Note Air 3C, a new 10.3 inch tablet from Books that is replacing the fan favorite Note Air 2 Plus, which fun fact was actually the first e-ink tablet I ever purchased. And the question we'll be looking to answer is, is the Note Air 3C worth upgrading to? The other piece here is Books is leaving the Note Air 2 Plus in the lineup just at a lower price point. Is it worth saving a few bucks and getting the Note Air 2 Plus or is the Note Air 3C worth splurging for? Let's figure that out. If you're new around here, my name is Brandon, and on this channel, I share practical tips to help you improve your focus and creativity. And if that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on the videos that I post here every other week. All right, back to the video. So it says books make a difference. Let's take a look at the back. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. Let me zoom that in for you a little bit. It says, Books Note Air C, 10.3 inch e-ink tablet, runs Android 12. I think, I think the other tablets were 11. So hold on, let me check that. Verified, the Books Tab Ultra C is Android 11, on the box at least. So this may be the first Android 12 based device that we're seeing. So it has that 10.3 inch Kaleido 3 screen that we saw in the Books Tab Ultra C at 300 pixels per inch in black and white and 150 pixels per inch in color. It has a front light, obviously supports touch via your fingers and a stylus. It has an octa-core processor and four gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. It has Wi-Fi 2.4 and five gigahertz and supports Bluetooth. So nothing too crazy there and supports USB-C including OTG to take you back to USB-A. It has a micro SD expansion slot, and this one apparently is black. And it does have a microphone and speakers. So, the other thing in here is a cover, which, let's take a look at that. So this is the magnetic smart folding stand protective case, which is a mouthful, but let's take a look. Okay, that's interesting. How do you take advantage of that? There's something interesting there. I'm curious to play with that once we actually get the device. So it's got these fold lines, kind of like a iPad smart cover. So let me see if I have, yeah, so here's my iPad that runs a Nomad leather cover. And one of the things it does is you can fold this in a triangle and then set the iPad like that. I assume this is gonna do something similar, but what I'm curious about is this angular piece. So anyway, don't let me forget to come back to that. books.com, books note air series. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah. All right, let's go through the accessories real quick and then we'll get into the actual device. And here appear to be some instructions, warranty card, 
quick start guide. Don't think we're gonna need that for today. And then I think we're gonna get a stylus and some cords. So this will be to open the SD card slot. Let's not lose that. And then this is gonna be a USB, USB three to USB C for charging and data transfer. And then it's gonna come with the book standard pen, uh, which means it's a good stylus, but lacks an eraser, which on this device is a little bit of a bummer. I find if you're gonna spend, can we get, yeah. I feel like if you're gonna spend this much money, you might as well splurge and get a pen with an eraser because using this device without an eraser is a bit frustrating. So Books makes their Pro Pen 2, which has an eraser and also has a nicer feel. I find that I prefer the smooth finish of this pen over this one. Um, but basically any Wacom stylus would work. The Remarkable 2 marker will work, although it's really pricey. Uh, the Samsung S Pen is also great. And then my personal favorite is the Kaveco. But again, it also lacks an eraser, so perhaps not a great fit for the books. So, initial impressions and differences from the Books Note Air 2 Plus. My initial feeling was it feels slightly thicker and well, I thought it felt heavier at first, but I'm not actually sure it is any heavier. So the device is slightly shorter and slightly narrower. The screen size feels about the same. So the usable size is the same, but they've been able to shrink the footprint of the tablet ever so slightly, which I think will be really nice. But you do feel that it's slightly thicker. Um, not anything significant, but slightly thicker. The other thing I noticed is the on and off button has been moved to the top and it's somewhat recessed. Let's see if I can get you a view of that. So there's like a little cutout and the button sits in there. So let's go ahead and turn this on. I actually really like that button. You'll be able to find it. It won't be in the way. You're not gonna bump into it on accident. But overall, I think this this feels like a Note Air device. Like it's very clearly a Note Air device in hand. Won't be confused with a Tab Ultra C. It, it has that form factor that you really want in a device that you carry around. I was gonna say the other thing you'll notice is it has the Kaleido screen. So the white point is a bit more dull than you're going to expect on a non-color device. So on the left is the Note Air 2 Plus, which is a black and white screen. And on the right is the Note Air 3C. So let's go through this prompt. I am not in Beijing. It's interesting that they default to English, but they default the time zone to Beijing. I don't want that, but I'll tweak it later. I do like that one. Starting up. Okay, set up for right hand. Let me see if I can get you back to... I'm running Niagara on the Note Air 2 Plus, and so that's why the home screen looked a little bit different. Uh, but now we're back to standard. So let's go ahead and set this up for left-handed use. I don't remember off the top of my head where that is. Mm -mm -mm. Function bar is on right, AKA left-hand mode. <laughs> 
So the other thing I'd like to tweak is, let's get this white point set a little bit closer to what we want. So I want a bit of warm light. Let's try and offset how blue that is. Again, it's never gonna be quite as bright as what's going on on the left, but we can get it a little bit closer. So my biggest challenge with these color devices, and I'll see if I can show this to you, is if we get really close, I don't know if I'm gonna be, I don't know that you're gonna be able to see this on the camera. So there's a pixel grid on here that you can see that you don't see on a black and white device. And so I don't mind it so much in the dark areas, but it's in these white areas that it's kind of problematic. So hopefully that will come through. Again, the, these white areas are where I find it a bit distracting. Let me show you the same thing on the Note Air 2 Plus. The white areas are, for the most part, completely clean. Obviously you don't get color, but it is a slight trade-off. And here we can confirm that it is actually running Android 12. Let's see if there's another spot where we can see that. Is it mentioned? Oh, we should get on the Wi-Fi. We now have Wi-Fi. Let's see if there's a firmware update. Doesn't think there is. We're running the version from September 16th. Let's take a look and see what's here. Um, actually, let's go back and see if we can see any more information about Android. Android security patch from August. Interesting. Onyx at Onyx Ubuntu. Interesting. Using the US servers. We can tweak those gestures a little bit. I personally prefer to have full screen refresh on this right hand side. I do home in the middle. I don't go into Ink Center that often. And if I do need Ink Center, I can always get it from this top right hand corner. This is usually how I'll access Ink Center if I need it. Let's go ahead and set the calibration. Calibration is set. I think for the most part, we're good. I mean, I can log in. I should log into my Onyx account though. We're now logged in and I assume we'll have our library shortly. I don't ever use their store, but we will use notes. So let's go ahead and check out the note taking experience and see how it compares to the Note Air 2 Plus. So I never love, I don't love the dot options on the books, but let's give that a go and see how we feel about it. Note that sidebar on the right does not carry over to the note-taking experience, so we need to go tweak that as well. And I think I'd do that right there. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's take a look at the default pen. Ooh. Nice and grippy. Here we can 
pull them up side by side. I think I put a custom grid pattern on here to make it a little bit more aligned with how I want it. I like a slightly wider grid and a smaller dot. And on the books, you get more dots and they're larger. I find that to be a little bit distracting. Hopefully that comes through on the feed. So let's do a quick writing comparison. So first the Note Air 2 Plus. Okay, and note that this is the pen brush with a setting of one on the Note Air 2 Plus, and then this is the pen brush with, an, with a setting of two on the Note Air 3C. In the process of doing that, I accidentally changed the template on this. There we go, we're back to normal. And you can see on the Note Air 2 Plus how you get a little bit of ghosting, or at least I can see it. I hope you can see it on the camera, but you can just flick from the bottom right hand corner if you have full screen refresh set. So how do they feel? What is the difference between the two? Um, I would say the Note Air 2 has a little bit of input latency that you notice, whereas the Note Air 3C feels very, very instant, very, very quick. The other thing I feel is the Note Air 3, I think it's just because it's brand new. There's no skin oil buildup on it yet, so it's a very grippy writing experience. Perhaps you can hear that. Let me try it. And then the Note Air 2 Plus. Well, they actually sound the same. They sound the same. Feeling wise, you get a lot more grip. Again, I don't think I've gotten my like skin oils on here. And you can probably get back to a grippy experience on the Note Air 2 Plus by just taking an alcohol wipe and cleaning those oils. I always find after I clean this device, it has a much grippier feeling. The other interesting note is how the Note software works with pixel density. So this is a one with the pen tool over here and it's thicker than a two on the pen tool over here. And so I think that has something to do with the increased pixel density. I think this is 224 pixels per inch and then this is gonna be 300 pixels per inch in black and white. So let's do just a little bit more writing to see how it feels. Yeah, and ever since I rubbed my skin across it, I can already tell it's not quite as grippy. We can use the eraser tool. By default, it's a stroke eraser. Let's check out a couple of other tools. Uh, let's grab the marker and see whether they made it over print. My guess is probably not, but we can try it nonetheless. part always annoys me a little bit that you have to set up your tools instead of being able to switch between them easily. So I have to then go in and create a preset. And so let's create another preset for the highlighter or as they call it, the marker. And then now that'll stay. So now I have a pen for writing and a marker for highlighting. So if I were to write over this, does it retain the drawing stack order? It does. So it applies the strokes in the order that you create them. So if I were to draw an, a marker over it now, it'll be sandwiched in between, which looks terrible. Um, again, as people have said in the comments before, you can get around this by having layers, but I personally find this is more hassle than it's worth. 
I'm not going to have a drawing layer and a highlight layer. Like, that's just a lot of work. Can I rename these? I've never actually tried to rename this. I don't think you can. All right, if you know how to rename a layer on the books device, please let me know down in the comments. You get bonus points if you do. Yeah, I don't think you can rename them. So let's do layer. Yeah, you definitely can't rename them because they, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think you can rename them. So the way you can work around this is have your writing on a higher layer in the stack. And then switch layers and highlight. Oh, that didn't do it. Okay, there it goes. It just takes a second to actually honor the layer stack. And then now you need to remember to switch back, which is way too much cognitive load. There should be a setting in here to tweak this. Actually, let me just double check that there isn't a setting. I don't think there is. Yeah, there's no real settings in here. You can customize the position, you can customize the toolbar. I think if I go out, there's some settings in here that I can tweak. Let's go check those. Options. Stylus, calib Stylus calibration, backup and restore, password, autosave frequency. I assume this is set to English. It is, okay. Scribble recognition with line breaks, automatic refresh. Show erasing trace. Okay, nothing crazy helpful in there. List mode, sync settings, what does manage notes do? Oh, okay, so that takes me into edit mode. You get a different set of tools across the right. Feedback, oh, this is from forever ago. If you sync notes across devices, the canvas size may not match screen size. You can zoom accordingly. Yeah, so I think the reason why it's bringing this up is because I have a Note Air 2 Plus and a Tab Ultra C, and those have different screen densities, and so I'm sure there's some, some adjustment that it has to do accordingly. Um, I guess the thing I didn't call out is, obviously we have color here, and if you were to use a highlighter on this device, you're only gonna get This is a lemon highlighter. This is the same highlighter. And obviously it's just grayscale over here. Also note the ghosting. The ghosting here is much more significant. So I opened a menu and now I have all this ghosting. Obviously I can make it go away here, but if I open a menu on this side and then close it, I mean, you get a little bit of ghosting in the color areas. But in the black and white areas, it's non-existent. So let's go in here. Okay, non-existent's probably a, a, a overreach. There's like a little bit of ghosting here, but not nearly as much. Whoa, okay. That gesture to refresh the page actually changed the page. Okay, that time it worked. I do like that the marker will layer on itself. I do sometimes wish you had a choice of how that's applied, but uh, either way, it's pretty good. So we can use the lasso. Let's use the lasso as an eraser. So we can cut, copy, paste, undo, redo. Undo and redo are kind of interesting here. What does color do? Can I change the color? Oh, that's really cool. That's potentially very, very handy. So you can draw a selection and then change its color. I didn't know you could do that. There was also tagging in here. Let's play with tagging. Yeah, 
close. What can I do with that? So I tagged that. What is that useful for? Filter and sort? No, it's not in filter and sort. Search. Ah, it's in search. So I can find references to a tag here. It'll take me back there. Hmm. Can I tag more generally? This part's a little unintuitive. Is it under insert? No, inserts like images. Link to notes. Oh, we can do like a jumping off point. Okay. Okay, you just have to tap it really hard, I guess. Oh, that's cool that you can go back. Oh. It doesn't actually go back. The first time you do this is a little weird. When I come back, my zoom level is incorrect. Hmm. It's a little wonky. Yeah, this is no longer the right size. Hmm. If I leave and come back, is it correct? No. All right, I may be crazy, but I swear that's not what that looked like before. Okay, you have to go back to one to one, and then it's fixed. But that's weird. That's some weird quirk with jumping back and forth between notebooks. Okay, so you have to touch with your finger right on that spot. And so like the fact that this doesn't match isn't weird because this is from a different device. But the fact when I come back, it doesn't set me back If I leave and come back, it's correct. Anyway, a little bit of quirkiness. I'm sure once you use this a few times, that'll feel more familiar, but that behavior is a little unintuitive, at least to me. We can get up to 500 pages in a notebook. So that's interesting. We should probably talk a little bit about the 500 page limit. So that means on the books, you probably don't want to have one notebook for everything. So if you did a daily notebook and you used one page a day, you would fill up a notebook at a little over a year and a half. So you probably need to start to think about segmenting your notes if that's the case. As far as I know, the Supernote and the Remarkable don't have that same limitation. So anyway, so summing up the writing experience, I think as a pure writer, if you're coming from the Note Air 2 Plus, this feels like a much better experience. Again, the same books writing app quirks exist, but if you're used to the books writing app, this is a better version of that writing app. Not because the software is fundamentally different, but just because the input and the display are better. So you're getting a better pixel density, you're getting access to color, and the input latency is significantly lower. So writing over here, I feel like I write more slowly because I'm waiting for the pen to catch up with me. And over here, when I'm in the right tool,
I can write at the speed of thought. So that's really nice. Writing, great. Which for most people, I think that's what this device is for. It's writing access to some apps and then the ability to read things that are in color. So let's go back out to the main screen. It's really annoying that I swipe from the bottom and it doesn't take me out. Let's go ahead and go into the Play Store, which again is another big reason why you would want this device is access to apps. Go with default settings for now. And I need to log in, so give me just a moment. For whatever reason, the first time I log into the Play Store on a books device, it always crashes on me. And then if I leave and come back, it's perfectly fine. Again, things you'll notice the first time you use the device, and then after that, they'll just go away and they'll be fine. All right, so yeah, I quit out of it, I come back, everything is good. So the two apps that I use frequently on here are Kindle. Again, a major reason for buying this device is access to apps. Obviously the Kindle Scribe exists now, which gives you another really great option here. That is really snappy. Usually it takes significantly longer to do that. It's also open Readwise. Specifically Reader. I probably should have searched specifically for Reader. Uh, but I just want to comment that this feels significantly snappier than on the Note Air 2 Plus. So let's, let's go into the store app on the Note Air 2. Let's do it from within the Onyx launcher. We're going to go to here. We're going to go into Rare. And yeah, the Play Store is there. So just notice how much ghosting you get here. Let's go in, search for Kindle. It works, but definitely feels a little bit more sluggish than over here on the side. Nice and snappy. Obviously color comes in really handy. And like this is just installing an update versus we were able to install the entire app in just moments over here. All right, let's open those. With the bezel being so small, it's really hard to hit that back gesture on this device. Let's go back into apps. I'm gonna log in to Kindle very quickly. All right, so I've logged into Kindle on this device. So let's pull those up side by side. Obviously the biggest thing you'll notice that's different is you have color. Notice that the color does ghost a little bit. Um, here, so let's refresh. Let's go into library. I'm filtered to audible over here for whatever reason. But that's the same app across both devices. I accidentally opened Superfans over here. Again, notice the ghosting. Here, let me scroll this just so you can see it. Yeah, so a little bit of ghosting all throughout there. Again, full screen refresh is your friend. Let's open Practical Vim. And a little bit faster over here. It's not the same page, but it's not for whatever reason. Interesting. The way the layout is is a little bit different. Again, notice how much snappier the Note Air 3 is versus the Note Air 2. But again, white point, very different. Like again, you're going to have a much darker viewing experience over here. 
but you do get color, which is really nice on a book like this that has some different things that they're trying to call out. So overall, I'd say this is probably an upgrade. Actually, in all respects, this is an upgrade. Again, 300 pixel per inch comes in really, really handy. Even if you don't want the color, I think the increase in screen density is really, really handy. Let's go check out a book that is more prose in nature. Oh, I don't think I have the back gesture set on this. Let's check out super fans. You reached your download limit. Fine. I didn't know that this was a thing. Okay, so it's now downloaded on both devices. Let's check first time load. Yeah, a little bit snappier. This is with default settings. Default settings are significantly faster on the Note Air 3C. And get you a close up of the screen quality. So this is the Note Air 2. This is the Note Air 3C. On Kindle, I think it's a major upgrade for the Note Air 3C. Let's go check out Readwise. <laughs> that is a huge difference. Also, it's still not even technically updated over here yet. I guess a proper disclosure is I really had a hard time with Readwise Reader on the Note Air 2 Plus. I had a much better experience on the Tab Ultra C with Readwise Reader, but you can kind of see what I'm referring to here is I just don't think there's quite enough processing power on the Note Air 2 Plus for the Readwise app the Readwise Reader app in its current form. On the Note Air 3C, buttery smooth, really, really nice. Let me try closing Reader and see, give it one more go. Yeah, I think we're gonna run into a similar thing. Just find that once it tries to load my entire library, it just doesn't have enough memory to hold it. So let's just pick a random article and see if it'll actually load it. Yeah. Note Air 2 Plus is out of the running in that regard. Let's go try and read a couple of things on here. So let's tap through, article loads. Okay, so this is a quirk with the default book settings um, for e-ink center with any app that uses the web view. So let me show you how to tweak that. So if we go up here, we go to e-ink center. One, if you turn all the optimizations off, that will, that will fix it. And I think it's not in here. How do I go back? Is there a back out of here? There is not. Okay, so you go in here, you go into Ink Center. If we go into Optimize, okay, it's in here. And so what we wanna do is, it's in Color, go into Other, and you turn off in bolden web page text. Why that's under Color? I don't know, it has nothing to do with color. And if we leave out of here, it'll look significantly better. Perhaps a little bit big, but overall really nice. Oh, this is silky smooth. This feels, I think this might actually be smoother than the Tab Ultra C, but that feels really good. And it's very, very legible. 
And this is with stock settings. I didn't have to tweak anything. Usually when I get a new books tablet, I have to tweak all these settings for a very long time before I like reading on the Kindle or I like reading in Readwise Reader, but this is pretty good from the start. Let's take a quick second to read some of this. The other thing that you can do here is you can set up page scrolling inside of this that toggles them. Perfect. Okay. So now you can have a page down and a page up. So we can now go a page at a time, which is a really nice way to use this. And again, if I want to get better quality, I can always flick, but overall that wasn't bad. It's a very in-depth blog article. All right, let's grab one more. So I'm pretty sure my A6700 just overheated, which is the first time that's happened. Sorry. All right, let's take a look at one more article. Let's look at this James Clear one. All right, let's see how highlighting works. Looks good. All right, early impressions are the Readwise Reader app will work very well on the Note Air 3. All right, last piece is PDFs. We should probably take a look at PDFs. I assume they're gonna be great, but let's just try one real quickly. I'm just gonna plug in the device, hold tight. So what you can't see right now is this loaded up as a drive on my MacBook, and then I can just pass this a PDF. There we go. There are those comic books. Let's open it up. And so it maintains the aspect ratio. It'll give you sidebars if you need them. This is a floating toolbar. I think I would prefer it to stay floating. And then you can bookmark in the top right. Overall, this looks really good. This page supports OCR. Do you want OCR it? Nope, I do not. Um, but overall, this looks really good. Let me see if I can get you close up. Yeah, overall, it looks really, really good. Here, I'll do a page flip. This document has a little bit of a muddy feel, but but reading comic books on this would be really nice. Again, having color, really handy. Oh, that was cool. There was some ghosting there and it recognized it and it automatically refreshed. Overall, it's not gonna be as vivid as something like an iPad, but you can read outdoors and it's way better for your eyes, especially if you turn the backlight off. So let me try that really quickly. Can I just toggle it off? Yeah, if you can get by reading like this, and again, I think this would look really good outside or with any good external light. Like this would be really, really nice. With that said, I prefer to have a little bit of light. So let's turn these back on. That's my own personal preference. So reading experience. Well, actually, let's bring back the Note Air 2 and do that same book. Let's see. Yeah. 
Here, let me see if I can get this out of the glare so that you can see it. Very different experience reading this in black and white versus in color. Again, this looks good, but the addition of color is really, really nice for these comic books. Like again, this scene, so fully black and white versus having color. Very different experience. This isn't bad, but I wanna say the price difference between these two devices is like 30 or $40. This is, in my opinion, a bit of a no-brainer. Like, there's not really a use case for buying a Note Air 2 Plus in 2023 when the Note Air 3C exists. Let's rewind just a little bit. Something that I didn't get into yet and I said I was gonna get into is this folio. Let's check out the folio. So it's magnetic. They didn't go with adhesive like they went with on the original Note Air. And so you just set that down in there like that, lay the flap down, and then this will hold your pen. So actually that's a good call out. Let's see how the pen adheres to the side. Cause that was always one of my nitpicks with the Note Air 2 Plus is the pen didn't stay very well on the side. It's not really any different here. Like this is not great. I wish they would flatten the edges so that the pen would actually stay but it doesn't seem like they've made any major changes there on this rendition. No matter where you put it or what angle you put it, it's never really super solid. So this flap, very handy and necessary or else you'll lose your pen. But you do that and then I think you'll be in pretty good shape. So this feel, so that feels pretty good. Lay that flap to the back, which is really handy. So that'll stay back there, so it'll be out of your way. You do get a little bit of wobble if you do that, so you're probably gonna wanna not do that while actually writing. But, and then you can lay this behind it. So let's see how this folds. So, okay, so that's a very iPad style fold. Looks good, feels stable. Again, you could flip this back here. I don't think I would write like this, but you could use a keyboard with this and it would work really well. This device supports a Bluetooth keyboard, so this would actually be a really nice experience being able to use an external keyboard either over USB-C, although um, the port is down there. So I don't think you're gonna be using USB-C while using the keyboard like this, but Bluetooth is definitely a viable option here. So I want to figure out what this other way of doing this is. What is this? How does this work? How is this intended? I feel like this part is a little bit bigger brained than I am. Like, what is this? Is that for this? I don't understand this little cutout here. How would I use that? Because you can't do it the other way. It would have to be this way. But that's not, hmm. Huh. There's some aspect to this that's really intelligent and I'm just not quite smart enough to figure it out. But this, this could work well. Once I figure out how this is intended to work, I will follow up in the final review. Thoughts on the Note Air 3C? I think if you are someone who was looking to get into the books ecosystem and your primary use case is note taking, this is a no brainer device. Um, I think with them first releasing the Tab Ultra C, it pushed a lot of people into that high productivity device that not everyone needed. So a big difference here is there's no camera and therefore no camera bump. So this device sits flat, it doesn't rock or anything like that. Um, it is really just, I think this device is gonna be a fan favorite for a lot of people 
because it has the right mix of features without going too overboard. I wanna say the price point is like 499 US, which again is on the high side. A Kindle Scribe is significantly cheaper than this. The difference here is a full Android store and color. And so if those two things are really important to you, I think this is a really nice device.